age concentrates on math. In this episode, we play a game of Monopoly. Guys, this corner is the hot spot. Everyone, almost everyone lands there. And you guys know why? Because the most probable thing to roll a dice is seven. Play soccer with a math teacher. That's not how you do it! And put the secondary five to the test with this immense jar of candy. I'm Mosa Tabran and you're watching SHTV. I'm Mosa Tabran and welcome to SHTV. This week, we start our exploration into the different subjects at school. Today, we're starting off with math. Let's see why math is important. Mathematics has been around since around 40,000 years. Did you know that they found traces of mathematics in Africa dating from almost 35,000 years before Jesus Christ? Meet some of our most important mathematicians. First, there is Pythagor. He was born around 570 years before Jesus Christ. He invented the Pythagorean relation. Second of all, we have Archimedes. He was born around 287 years before Jesus Christ. He was a Greek mathematician and an engineer. He found and proved a lot of formulas. For example, he found the formula to calculate the air of a sphere. He was the biggest mathematician of his time. Third of all, we have Al Khwarizmi. He was born during the year 780. He invented algebra and he wrote a book about it without mentioning a single number. Also, he is probably the reason why you fail math. How to use mathematics in your life? research of course a lot of the, the physics or that kind of stuff all the research that's going on there in the technology world does have a lot of mathematical background so uh, mathematics itself uh, as, as a topic let's say is uh, very relevant in the world today and it really contributes to the scientific development of the world the technological development of the world so in that sense it, the, the topic itself is very important but I guess a more interesting question is why uh, why is math important for uh, high school students. Well, in reality, I, uh, my personal opinion is that uh, uh, math classes at the level of uh, high school students aren't necessarily meant to kind of guide students towards becoming mathematicians or uh, engineers or that kind of stuff. They're really more uh, to train the students to kind of uh, improve their problem solving skills. So maths are basically a set of constraints that you need to handle and you need to kind of solve the, the constraints. And uh, that, uh, that kind of skill, basically constraint solving and uh, problem solving, those kinds of skills are uh, really important in life. So teaching that at a young age, uh, at high school students, through mathematics is, uh, in my opinion, a good way to forward. It's a good way to kind of uh, shape uh, young adults. Alright, your first question is 54 minus 32. That's correct. Your second question 68 minus 9 plus 22. Incorrect, it's 81. Alright, your last question 54 
plus 9 minus 60. That's correct. Thank you. A lot of people think that math is very boring, but we're here to prove to you that actually it can be quite fun. Let's see how math is involved in the game of Monopoly. Hello guys! Math! <laughs> Yalla! Math is like a game. You solve riddles, find solutions, and develop strategies. Now tell me, how is that different from any game? As you progress with math, you start to discover more and more unique mechanics. Now, you may find math boring, but I can assure you it's not the case. But if you are, you're probably very familiar with it, and I suggest you that you can move on to something more challenging. So in conclusion, math is very easy. Math is fun because it has many branches. Here are some examples. Trigonometry. Arithmetic. Calculus. Algebra. Topology. Probability. Eh! Computer science. Cryptography. Are you really bad at Monopoly? Of course you are. Then come, play with us, and learn how to play like a true mathematician. Yes! Woo! Let's learn how to play like true mathematician. So as you can see, I have landed on Reading Railroad. $200. It might seem like a lot for just a railroad, but if you own four railroads, that's $200. And considering that it is statistically proven that the player will at least land once on a railroad per run and we're playing with two players, that makes me at least 400 at least to the bare minimum, $400 per run. So let's move on, Garo. Ah. Very nice, you got a five, so let's move to electricity. What do you mm. have to say on electricity? What is so, about electricity. Mm. Guys, it's a scam, don't buy it. it. Because you won't get any money in return, it's just like you're buying something, so just don't do it. Yes, the returns are very difficult. Obviously. Yeah, I don't advise you to do that as a mathematician. Alright, how about your turn? Interesting, eight, that is Kentucky. So, you landed on the right spot. Guys, this corner is the hot spot. Everyone, almost everyone lands there. And you guys know why? Because the most probable thing to roll a dice is seven. So you do seven, 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 and you're automatically in this corner. So, will you buy it? Of course I will. Of course you will. All right, so Garo, you, you two landed on St. James Place. As you can see, it's a hot spot. So I'm gonna give you that one. It's uh, 180. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, alright, so I'm gonna roll now, and we got a 5, interesting, so where am I that this is me? Again, BNO Railroad, Railroad's very profitable guys, buy them. As you guys see, it's the second time bike landing on the railroad, so you know, there's a lot of chance that we're gonna land on the railroad. Yeah, please buy them. Alright, Harold, you even landed on Indiana, so that's your second red card, so good job on that one. Of course so I'm, I'm gonna, gonna buy it. Of course. Of course you're gonna buy it. So let's roll again. Let's see what comes next. That's a nine. So we have landed on no that's not nine. <laughs> we have landed on Pennsylvania Avenue. So guys, this is $320. Don't buy it. It's too expensive and the rewards are not really good. Even with one house, this is a fifth 150. You're not getting what you're paying and nobody really lands here because from here the most likely places are yellow and go to jail you'll just skip right here if we follow the dice probability so worthless wow Garo, you really created a housing shortage like there are barely any houses left and i barely have any properties so i'm not gonna make as much money as you unfortunately i know you're gonna lose money too because you're paying me a lot of money just yeah. by stepping on my house wait wait it's my turn i'm gonna upgrade my four houses to a hotel no never buy hotels look at this it's already 400 uh, 600 dollars for your houses plus another 150 for your hotel it's too expensive you're never going to make the profit be a mathematician think like a mathematician so i landed on this virginia property but I don't want to buy it, so I'm going to sell it to one of these guys. $10, $50. $50? Wow. 
yeah. we'll go okay. a little higher. I'm gonna go for 75. Uh, 85. Going once, going twice. 90 dollars. 200 dollars. Wow, 200 dollars. Two hundred fifty. Oh no, I have landed on the go-to jail, so now I have to go to jail. But you know what, guys? It's a good thing because what happens is that I'm sitting here and waiting for my turn to come to play, and they what they're doing is that they paying me taxes. So what happens? Look, this is how it's rich you can get. How are you? Good. good. What is your name? Oren. What grade are you in? In Saki. All right. We're gonna start off with some mathematical questions. What is twelve uh, square plus two square? Is it is hundred and forty-eight. You're right. All right. Next. What is three square, square? plus seven square? You're right. All right. Next, what is one thousand minus nine hundred nine? What is one thousand minus ninety nine? Ninety nine. Yeah. It is nine hundred and one. Just to show the viewers. You're right. All right. Last question. What is eight squared minus two squared? Eight squared yeah. minus two squared. Sixty two. Alright, thank you very much. Have a nice day. Computer programming is a field that a lot of students go into after high school, and math plays a vital role in it. We got the chance to ask Ryan Guzelian five questions. Hi, my name is Ryan. I am currently a software engineer at CAE. I graduated CJEP from Collège de Bois-Boulogne and attended Concordia University as a student in software engineering. Why did you decide to become a software engineer? So back in high school, I was pretty good in math, but I wanted to go into law at the time. So when I started CJEP, after taking my first philosophy class and almost failing, I realized that I would just not be good in any sort of law. But I was doing pretty good in my coding classes and that's when I realized that since I love coding and math, I could just go into software engineering, I tried it out and well, it's going great. Who inspired you to go into this branch? Uh, I don't really have any sort of inspiration for software engineering specifically, but I can tell you that the reason that I went to sciences was Stephen Hawking. Why did you decide to work at CAE? So in the current job market, as you might know, CAE is a pretty big company. So it was the best offer that I got from out there. I got different offers also from some, some smaller companies, but at the end of the day, CAE was the one to give me the biggest offer that I could get. And the industry that they're in is pretty interesting as well. What exactly do you do at the CAE? So at CAE, what we work on mostly is aviation simulation. We work with companies such as Boeing and Airbus, where we replicate their cockpits in our factories. That way they can uh, send our, their pilots our way. We install our aviation, aviation simulation software, and they can see if what they're trying to work on is a great airplane, if it needs some modifications. Other than that, we have contracts with the military. We might know some of the stuff from uh, Call of Duty, but unfortunately I cannot go into details in that since there are no disclosing agreements set up. Other than that, we also have a small health section uh, department where uh, we make training equipments for nurses. That would not be my own expertise area, but uh, that's how they train for stuff such as vaccinations, for example, for COVID. Alright, so have any of the skills you've learned during your school 
years helped you in your current job? I could tell you that uh, the main thing from my high school years that helped me were sort of the logic notions that I picked up through my math classes. Other than that, I did really benefit from my CJEP cooling classes and well, my university years since they were very specialized. But what I could tell you is that uh, what did not specifically apply to me did not necessarily go a long way with me, such as history, uh, biology classes, uh, I don't remember anything really. My name is Rag and I'm in secondary 3. Alright, the first question is 32 minus 17 plus 4. 19. Correct. The second question is 119 plus 72 minus 3. Sorry? Sorry, that's incorrect. It's 188. The last question. 66 plus 99. 167. No, Incorrect. Correct. 165. We want to continue to prove that math can actually be quite fun. And in this school, there's one sport that everyone loves. Soccer. <gasps> plus 200 minus 1438 okay I think it's minus 1094 am I right yes you're right oh all right next what is 12 plus 12 minus 2 plus 8 are you following? Yes. Minus 2 plus 8 yes. plus 16. Okay. 
52. You're right. All right. It's now time for the third week of the Secondary 5 Final Showdown. While this challenge seemed like a tree, it actually turned out to be quite a trick. This week, we had the Sec 5s do their own kindness competition. We'd like to congratulate Sec 5A on their victory. Vous vous demandez probablement à quoi sert ce bocal de MLM. Bonjour, je suis Madame Langlois, enseignante de 5e secondaire, 4e secondaire et 2e secondaire en mathématiques depuis les 8 dernières années à Surpago. Cette semaine, je vous souhaite la bienvenue à la troisième semaine de la compétition entre les deux groupes de cinquième secondaire. Cette compétition elle, comporte plusieurs défis. Et voici le défi de cette semaine en mathématiques. Les deux groupes étaient séparés et avaient un bocal de ce type euh, qui est un petit peu plus gros que celui-ci et devaient déterminer le nombre de MNN dans le bocal sans ouvrir le bocal euh, et sans compter les MNM un à un. On va maintenant regarder un petit peu le travail de chacun des deux groupes. Bon, votre tâche à l'aide de ce paquet de M&M que vous pouvez ouvrir et manipuler est de déterminer combien de M&M se trouve dans ce bocal sans les compter et sans ouvrir le bocal. <rire> OK. Félicitations aux deux équipes, ils ont travaillé très fort durant tout leur dîner. Euh, avant de vous montrer leur solution, je vais vous montrer comment moi j'aurais procédé avec ce format un petit peu plus petit. Donc voici les quatre étapes que j'aurais utilisées pour faire la démarche. Donc compter les M&M selon le rayon, 1, 2, 3. Ensuite calculer la surface du disque. On peut ensuite compter la hauteur en termes de M&M, multiplier l'air du disque par la hauteur, puis calculer 90 de la superficie. Maintenant que je vous ai montré les étapes générales, je vais les détailler une à une pour vous montrer ma solution finale. La première étape, c'est de compter le nombre de M&M qui constitue le rayon. 1, 2, 3. Donc, la première étape, déterminer le rayon. Le rayon mesure 3 M&M. La deuxième étape est déterminer l'air de la surface de la base du bocal. La deuxième étape, c'est de calculer l'air de la base du bocal. Pour ce faire, on utilise la formule pi fois rayon exposant 2. 
Le rayon mesure 3 mm. Et donc, on obtient une aire de 9 pi mm. La troisième étape, c'est de multiplier l'air de la base du bocal avec la hauteur de MNM. La hauteur va être comptée en termes de MNM. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Je vais ensuite multiplier l'air de la base du bocal avec la hauteur pour déterminer le volume. On a déterminé le, la hauteur euh, du bocal qui est de 10 mm. On peut déterminer le volume du bocal en effectuant l'air de la base fois la hauteur qui nous donne le volume. Et on obtient un volume de 90 pi MNM. Il ne faut pas oublier que le bocal est constitué d'espaces vides et d'une section qui ne comporte pas de MNM au-dessus. Donc, j'ai décidé de prendre 90 du volume des MNM. Donc, dernière étape, on détermine le nombre de MNM en prenant 90% de 90 pi pour un total de 254,47 MNM. J'arrondis donc à 254 comme réponse finale. Donc, merci d'avoir regardé la façon dont moi, j'aurais procédé. Maintenant, joignez-vous à moi pour regarder ce que les 5A ont fait en compagnie d'Alim Jabarian. OK, we started off by giving variables to each color of M&Ms. So, X was, for example, blue, Y was orange, and vice versa. Afterwards, Um, we counted how many M&Ms of each color there was in one packet. So, for example, we found six blues, three reds, and so on and so forth. which makes a total of 24 M&Ms in one pack. So afterwards, we, count, we eyeballed the number of packets in that jar and we said about 20 packs. So we did, we took all the numbers and multiplied it by 20. And afterwards, we put all these numbers and we added their variables to uh, come up with our final formula. So 20x plus 60y and so on and so forth.
Donc, euh, voici la première façon de procéder. Euh, on voit qu'on utilise les variables mathématiques euh, et l'addition, soustraction, multiplication. Donc, euh, moi et Seva, nous avons commencé par calculer le volume du bocal en premier. Donc, pour faire cela, on a calculé l'air de la base du bocal euh, fois la hauteur du bocal. Et on a trouvé 2734,375 cm3. Ensuite, on a calculé le vo volume d'un paquet d'MNM. Oh non, vite. Donc, il y avait 19 MNM et ça nous a donné 43,47 cm3. Ensuite, euh, afin de trouver le nombre de paquets dans le bocal, on devait diviser le volume du bocal et le volume d'un paquet. Donc, le nombre de paquets... Un volume du bocal divisé par le volume d'un paquet. Et ça nous a donné à peu près 63 paquets. Et finalement, pour trouver le nombre d'MNM dans le bocal, on devait multiplier le nombre de paquets par 19. Donc le nombre d'MNM total et ça nous a donné à peu près 1200 MNM. Voilà. Donc ici, on est avec une façon de faire un petit peu plus euh, mathématique dans le sens où le calcul du volume est utilisé. Autre façon intéressante. Donc, félicitations encore euh, aux deux groupes. Euh, C'est le moment tant attendu d'avoir mon opinion sur le défi. Euh, donc, euh, Alec, bonne technique avec la multiplication, le nombre de paquets. Euh, par contre, c'était une approximation qui a été utilisée. Euh, pour euh, Arény, donc les 5B, on a utilisé le calcul du volume, super intéressant, euh, pour avoir une meilleure idée du nombre de paquets et ainsi du nombre de MNM. Donc, félicitations aux 5B. Euh, vous êtes les grands gagnants de ce défi. Donc, merci d'avoir regardé le défi avec nous cette semaine. Joignez-nous la semaine prochaine pour le prochain défi. M. Sarkis, allez-y. Alors, la première question, c'est 65 moins 25 plus 10. 50. Oui. La deuxième question, 33 plus 90. 123. Oui, bon. Et la dernière question, 45 plus 98. 100... <rire> 40, combien? 40 plus 99. 139. Oui. Merci. 
Thank you for watching SHTV. We hope you enjoyed our episode on all the different ways math is important. Let's finish off with someone who is synonymous with the subject. Why are obtuse triangles so depressed? Why? Because they're never right. The English book asked the math book why he was so sad. Do you know what he replied? No. Because I have so many problems. What did the triangle say to the circle? What? You're pointless. <laughs> <laughs> what is the favorite type of tree of a math teacher? What? Geometry. <laughs> Why was six afraid of seven? Why? Because seven, eight, nine. <laughs> what did the zero say to the eight? What? Nice belt. Ha, 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 ha.